What's up everybody, Superdux fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2016 GMC Canyon SLT Diesel. Huge thanks to GMC for providing me with this very nice press vehicle to review for you guys today. So about the GMC Canyon, well, I already reviewed the 2015 Colorado, which uh, this is largely based on. And uh, so, you know, for the Canyon here, they just made it a little more upscale, a little more refined and luxurious. You have a more traditional grill and more handsome, I think, and elegant looking front end than you get with the Colorado. Both look great, but uh, just, you know, a difference of preference. And I think the GMC version looks just as good as the Colorado does. And, uh, you know, you do have the chrome accents there on the door handles and the mirrors and things like that to help give a little bit more of an upscale appearance in addition to the taillights that are uh, a little bit of a different design from the Colorado and uh, overall I think it's just still a great looking truck here and uh, with the diesel option uh, makes it a really great choice for those that want to do towing and things like that as well. Rest for the interior of the 2016 Canyon here well it's really nice uh, so anyway first things first seeing that in these seats this is one of the biggest complaints I have with Colorado that they improved here for the Canyon is these seats. The seats in the Canyon are pretty firm and not very soft. These are super soft, very comfortable, nice seats. The same basic shape as those in the Colorado, but uh, just like I said, so much more cushioning. Obviously the nice leather uh, seating here is also appreciated over the cloth in the uh, Colorado, but uh, yeah, just really nicely done seats. Uh, very comfortable and uh, exactly perfect for what you want in a truck. Next is the steering wheel in the uh, Canyon here, which is really nice. I love this brown leather. It just looks so luxurious and so upscale. And uh, you know, you got the contrast stitching and it feels really good too. We've got a pretty good nine and three grip here, a little 10 and two notches, a nice brushed aluminum uh, finish here, uh, or at least looking like brushed aluminum. Very nicely done there. I got, you know, these nice buttons that always feel pretty good. And overall, it's just a really nicely styled and nice feeling wheel. Next is the gauges on the Canyon here, which are really great. You know, the same basic ones out of the Colorado, but you have the uh, red uh, accents there on them. And uh, the, they're great gauges. I mean, they're simple, easy to read. No complaints there whatsoever. You have a nice high resolution color screen there in the middle that will give you all kinds of uh, good information and very configurable. You can, uh, you know, tailor to just exactly, you know, the information you want to see. And overall, just really nice gauges. Come along to the center of the dashboard here. It's, uh, again, same great stuff you get in the Colorado. Colorado here just uh, got some nicer finishes here with again more of this uh, look looks like brushed aluminum I'm pretty sure it's plastic but still looks really nice and feels pretty good as well uh, you have uh, you know the same 8 inch touchscreen here much like you get in the other uh, GM products uh, this one's called a telelink for the GMC versions anyway it's great easy to use for 2016 here it does have the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built into it as well which is great to have that um, but it's always you know pretty easy to use system um, you know and anyone that's used the GM vehicle in the past few years will be familiar with it and it's really uh, a good system not overly complicated just nice and simple and easy to use Climate controls and other switch gear here uh, all are pretty good. You know, the same exact thing you get in the uh, Colorado, actually. But that's no complaint. They're still really nice, and uh, I think they still feel worthy of this car's price tag, you know, being a truck. And, uh, you know, they all are nicely laid out and uh, well-placed. As far as storage space in the Canyon here, it's pretty good. So, anyway, uh, first things first, here in the doors, you have a two-tiered storage thing. you got a little pocket up here for maps and things like that. And then you have another pocket down here below that also includes a bottle holder, which is nice to have. Coming over to the center here, you have this nice deep uh, cubby here in the front in front of the shifter. You'll also find a USB jack, an auxiliary jack, and a power outlet in there. So great to have all those right there. You have your two cup holders here. You have another little additional cubby here behind the shifter, which is good to have. And then you have the center armrest, which again is something that's uh, nicely improved over the harder one in the Colorado. Uh, this is nicely uh, padded here in uh, leather. And anyway, you open that up and you have this very deep uh, center armrest here. You can fit all kinds of stuff in this huge cubby you also have another usb jack in there as well and uh speaking of usb jacks if you'd like more there are two more in the back seat and so we'll just uh, go ahead and start talking about the back seat there which is really you know spacious roomy and comfortable here in the crew cab configuration like we have here uh and uh, 
you know, plenty of leg room there. I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. Uh, several inches of leg room, lots of headroom, of course, you know, being the boxy truck shape. And uh, overall, just a really nice, and again, those seats back there are just as comfortable as the ones up here. So a really nice and comfy back seat as well. And uh, so it'd be really great for, you know, taking five people around here with ease. Truck bed in the canyon here is really great. Again, this is the short bed version, the short box. Uh, and so uh, it's still lots of room, I think, you know, plenty for most people. And uh, yeah, I always love how the GM vehicles, the GM trucks at least, have the cutouts there in the bumper for a step. So it's easier to get into the truck bed there. It also has the soft open tailgate, which is always appreciated as well. And uh, this one has the spray in bed liner as well. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of attachments you can get so that uh, you can custom tailor the truck bed to suit uh, whatever activities it is that you like doing. Um, and uh, overall, I think it's just a really nice, uh, you know, and spacious truck bed. You'll have the light back there as well that you can uh, turn on right up front here. And, um, you know, overall, it's just a really nice space. All right, so start up and go for a drive. The uh, GMC Canyon uh, still is sticking with the regular key. You still, you have a nice uh, key fob here as well, but it's not keyless start. Uh, so you just uh, do it the old fashioned way here. Put the key in, turn it on, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off in the 2016 GMC Canyon Duramax Diesel. So the first thing you notice about this truck is that it is a diesel. And uh, so you can definitely, you know, hear a higher than average uh, amount of engine noise and vibration, a little bit of roughness, uh, which just comes with the territory of having a diesel and anyone that's interested in a diesel, uh, you know, that's something that they're expecting. And, uh, you know, they've gone to some pretty great lengths to try and uh, minimize that harshness and uh, smooth that over a little bit. And it is uh, more refined than other diesels you know that I've ridden in in the past and things like that um, but there's, there's still no mistaking that it is in fact a diesel other things you notice right off the bat is the visibility which is fantastic of course like all the trucks you're sitting up high you can see everything in front of you you do have a hood to look over but uh, you know you're up so high it doesn't matter uh, you have great side visibility you know, the window sills don't come up too high so you can see everything there very well uh, you do have pretty chunky B pillars there but you do have a blind spot mirror within your normal mirror uh, to help you see around that and um, you know so otherwise uh, as long as you have your mirror set up it's totally fine visibility wise and uh, view out of the back is great of course that little window there as well alrighty so uh, <clears throat> let's turn on to the straight road here and see how it does uh, there we go <laughs> I'm floored but it's uh it's okay, so uh, you know, this is a turbo diesel truck, so not a straight line performer, but this diesel does, you know, make use of a turbo to give it a lot more torque than a standard Canyon or Colorado would. So uh, this is a 2.8 liter Duramax uh, turbo diesel engine, uh, and uh, so it makes 181 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. So uh, lots of torque, but it only, it comes on at 2,000 RPM, which sounds low, but whenever this car's tachometer tops out at 5,000 RPMs, you're, uh, you know, almost halfway into the power band there before that torque comes on. Zero to 60 time, though, for the Canyon diesel is right around 10 seconds, so pretty slow, um, but again, we're talking about a diesel truck here, so that is not the goal of this vehicle. Um, and so, uh, you know, one thing that I've noticed already, just in the little bit of driving that I've been doing, is that you can can't be gentle with the gas pedal, uh, you know, because this thing heavily relies on that turbo and uh, you know you kind of got to get it to you know go down into one of the lower gears to get that turbo spool and once that sucker is spooled up though then it hauls but until then you're kind of waiting and there is some turbo lag there while you're waiting around for it to really spool up and really kick in and give you the uh, go that you want and so uh, you know but that's again pretty consistent with other diesels that I've driven in the past uh, diesel trucks that is and um, so you know I would say that anyone that's coming out of a another diesel truck and coming into this it's not going to be anything new or anything unexpected uh, but you know for those that haven't uh, driven a diesel truck before though just something to note. It is very comfortable though uh, it's pretty nice and smooth refined ride here for this GMC model um, you know wind noise isn't too bad the ride is definitely very smooth and um, Overall, it rides pretty nice. But otherwise, though, now we're on a back road here, and again, this is not the type of thing you bomb down a back road in, but just for anyone that's curious, it does handle corners pretty well for a truck, and uh, you, know, you don't have to be in fear of tipping over constantly or anything like that. Uh, it handles them pretty well, and it also feels relatively small.
small going down the road too. It's not a super wide, intimidating thing to drive, which uh, is refreshing, you know, in a truck. You know, some of these larger vehicles really feel big, and although you're sitting up really high, it's still very easy to keep in your lane. And uh, you know, I think driving in urban settings and things like that wouldn't be quite as overwhelming as it would be in some of these larger trucks. So uh, you know, it's pretty good, but you know, like I'm not going to be uh, going around super tight corners in this, uh, pushing it or anything like that. But you know, whenever you do happen to find yourself on a windy road, uh, you know, it handles it just fine like you would expect out of any other truck. But yeah, so I'm going to have this vehicle for an entire week and I'm going to drive around some more and, you know, see what kind of fuel economy I get and uh, test out the radio and things like that. And I'll come back and give you some updated impressions. All right, so I've been driving the 2016 GMC Canyon diesel for almost a week now. And uh, it's really great, but it's not perfect. Um, but as far as the positives, I gotta say the range is really great. Um, you know, because I've put about 150 miles on it and uh, it's still well over a half tank of fuel. And that's not just because it's been getting pretty decent fuel economy, which I'll mention in a second here, but it just has a huge tank. And so because of that, uh, you know, you have a good amount of range, which uh, really makes it nice. And that's common with all diesels in general, but just nice to have that. Um, speaking of, you know, fuel economy though, in my week of driving here, I got just just over 20 miles per gallon at uh, 20 and a half, uh, which is right in line because my driving was mostly city driving and this car is rated at 20 in the city and uh, 29 on the highway for a combined average of 23. And so, uh, you know, like I said, I did very little highway driving, so mostly city. And so that uh, fuel economy number is pretty respectable, especially considering I'm testing it on uh, very hilly roads where we're going up hills and down hills. And, um, so for some of the downsides, <laughs> speaking of hills, you know, I mentioned that one thing that's kind of uh, less desirable is this I, I don't know if it's just the way the transmission is geared or what but it's very aggressive with its engine braking and when you're going down hills or just slowing and hitting the brake in general it loves to just downshift like crazy and sometimes I mean this tachometer only goes up to 5,000 rpms sometimes it'll be near 4,000 rpms just with the engine braking uh, going on and so really aggressive would be different if I was pulling a trailer and I you know had the exhaust brake on or I was in you know, some kind of trailering mode Mode, then I could see it, you know, wanting to help save the brakes and stuff. But when you're just cruising around town for it to be rawr, rawr, and just constantly downshifting and going crazy uh, is a little excessive. And, uh, you know, you do have this manual shiftability function that isn't very quick, but it's a truck. So it's not like you're going to have paddle shifters and stuff like that. But I mean, you could manually upshift it yourself, but it's just a pain to put in a manual and, you know, have it do something it should be doing on its own. And we'll go for a little acceleration here. And this is one of the other things that uh, it's it's still not the best. You know, I was hoping the diesel would have enough grunt that it would be solve all my complaints I had with the regular Colorado V6 because that motor is very high strung and likes to be revved out. And there wasn't much torque down low in the regular Canyon or for that matter the Canyon. That's it. They use the same V6. And so I was hoping this diesel with its 369 pound feet of torque would, uh, you know, have a lot more of that low end grunt. But that torque doesn't come in full blast until 2000 RPMs, which on a tachometer that only goes up to five, that's a good ways into the power band before that torque fully kicks in. And there is some turbo lag there for sure. Um, so, I mean, it's a little 2.8 liter four cylinder that's relying heavily on a turbo to make that much torque. So, uh, you know, that's to be understandable. There, that is the trade off there. There isn't much horsepower with 181, but uh, it does have a good amount of grunt. It's better than the V6, I would say. If I had to choose between this and the V6, I would probably choose this, even though it's a $4,000 premium over the V6. Uh, you know, it's a more expensive engine option for sure. But, um, you know, I think that it's probably worth it for the enhanced capabilities with towing and all that kind of stuff as well. But um, it's still not quite as quick as I would like. Maybe, you know, it'd be cool if they, you know, did a V8 version one day or something that would uh, solve some of those problems. But, uh, you know, this diesel though is definitely better, I think, and probably the best engine option out of the bunch. Another quick little complaint that I'll say uh, is that there were, there were a couple of rattles in the week that I've been driving in here. There was a rattle up in the dashboard area somewhere, I think in the air vents uh, that uh, came on from time to time. And also sometimes going around low speed corners where I was turning the wheel a lot, uh, the steering column did like to have a little bit of a rattly kind of sound to it where there's some kind of either friction or something going on there that was causing that to squeak. Um, so just a few little, you know, 
I guess, fit and finish issues there. Uh, but overall, the fit and finish in this truck is beautiful. I absolutely love this brown leather. Uh, it's very rich and elegant looking. Two things though about this upmarket GMC version that I'm a little bit surprised by. The first is that it still only has halogen headlights. Um, you know, I can see obviously the Colorado not having any kind of HID or Xenon headlights is fine. But for the GMC version, you would think it would at least be an option. I, I wouldn't expect to be standard equipment necessarily, but you know, for the GMC version being the more expensive and more luxurious version, you would think that they would have at least an option for Xenons, but it's not even an option. This car doesn't have them, uh, but I even went on the configurator and you, there's no way to get any kind of Xenon headlights. So, you know, you're in a nearly $45,000 truck and you still have halogen headlamps, which I mean, I guess truck buyers probably don't care as much as, you know, luxury uh, car buyers and things like that, but just would still be a nice thing simply because of the increased visibility you have at night. And the other thing that I'm surprised that this truck doesn't even have as an option again is keyless access, push button start, uh, or, you know, just keyless entry into the vehicle. Because, uh, you know, you do have, of course, the nice key fob and you can hit that to unlock it. But with most, a lot of modern cars, a lot that are a lot less expensive, even like even the base Chevy Camaro, that is a standard feature feature is keyless entry push button start and it's just a convenience thing of not having to dig in your pocket every time you go out to the car to unlock it and hop in and things like that so that would be nice I mean you know it's it's technology that GM has and they if they're including it in the base you know mid twenty thousand dollar Camaro you would think that it would at least be an option here on this nearly forty five thousand dollar truck again but that isn't uh, the case and that that is that option isn't even present here on the, the GMC's uh, so that's a, again another thing that I wish it had and so um, in conclusion, here are my thoughts on the Canyon. It's a very nice truck, and I would still choose it, I think, over the Colorado simply because of the more comfortable seats and, uh, you know, the nicer trim and stuff I think is worth the premium over the uh, Colorado. But, uh, you know, there are still some things that are missing that I think could really put this over the top as the clear choice over the Colorado. You know, styling aside, you know, if you like the styling of one over the other, you'll pick that regardless of the, you know, trim levels and things like that. But it would be nice to have more of those premium features that are available, uh, you know, in some of the larger trucks and available in other trucks, you know, for the same price here. Um, that would be good because otherwise, you know, I mean, it is a steep price for a, you know, mid-sized truck. It's on a full-size truck and, you know, to still have that high higher price tag uh, makes it a little bit more of a tougher sell but of course this is this one is fully loaded at you know nearly forty five thousand dollars you can get into a canyon for low twenty thousands anyway let me know your thoughts on the canyon and thank you guys very much for watching i'll see you next time take care